Starting off with the Transformers bonus update notes, we have some balance changes to Smite. The anti-heal brawling debuff is going to be changed from 30% to 40% anti-heal when you're not brawling with enemy gods. Lotus Crown is having its physical and magical protections from its passive debuffed from 20 to 15. Divine Rune is getting a power buff from 90 to 110. Warrior's Axe is getting its passive HP steal nerfed from 35 to 25, but you'll be able to get that back up as you level up with the item. Wind Demon is having a nerf on both its base stats, attack speed, and its passive attack speed. Bastet is getting a nerf to her ultimate in terms of cooldown and her power scaling. She is also receiving a nerf in terms of her passive lifesteal and ability lifesteal. Kalina is having a slight power scaling reduction in her ultimate. And Kamazots is having the power scaling nerfed on both his ultimate and his second ability, Vampire Bats. Erling Shan is having the damage nerfed on his turtle as well as the cooldown increased. Nike is having a nerf to her ultimate so that her slow is 4 seconds at all ranks and a nerf to her 2 so that the barrier only lasts 4 seconds. Ardeo is being nerfed where her 3 now has a 1 second longer cooldown and her 2 which has a power debuff is now 15% rather than 25% power reduction for enemies. And lastly the Morrigan's stealth duration has been nerfed slightly. Now here's a quick look at the skins for the bonus update. Starting off, we have Infinite Overseer Cerberus. The balance of this dimension is crumbling. The infinite must intervene or all will be lost. Then we have Soul Slayer Nemesis. This battlefield is perfect. It reeks of carnage, blood, and despair. Next, we have Crimson Authority King Arthur. If Morgan Le Fay wishes it, I must obey. And we even get a Cabracken skin called Shield Guardian Cabracken. Let us teach them a lesson they won't soon forget. Here is a quick look at the Smite World Championship schedule if you guys want to take a look real quick. Hi Rez is also doing a charity event in memory of John Finch on December 11th. The Conquest map will now have the Smite Trophy for the World Championship featured at the Fire Giant and just various things around the map as well. All of these changes will be live on November 30th for the bonus updates. However, we still have the regular updates for 8.12, so let's move into those. Starting off, Enchanted Spear will be buffed to have 60 power instead of 40. Tier 2 Obsidian Shard will have its magical power increased from 45 to 55. And Full Obsidian Shard will thankfully have its power increased from 80 to 90. Book of Souls is having its magical power increased from 55 to 65. And Book of the Dead was a bit over buffed last time, so now they're nerfing it from 30% to 25% of your max mana for its shield. I have the jungles having a buff where its HP5 is increased from 15 to 20 and its MP5 is increased from 10 to 15 in the jungle. Terra is having a mechanic changed where previously she could use her 2 and dash through the 2 to get the shatter damage and the close damage at the same time, but that is no longer the case. They are removing it. Bologna is getting scaling increased damage on her Scourge. Ganesh is now knockback immune while channeling his second ability. Vomana passive currently gives you power based on your physical protections. However, it will now also provide attack speed based on your physical protections, where if you have 100 physical protections, you will get 10% attack speed. And Ratatoskr is getting various power buffs to all of his acorns. Mercury's first ability, Made You Look, can now go through walls. Neath's Weaves will now last for 2 minutes from her passive, and as well as her second ability is getting a damage buff. Jingwei's AoE auto attacks will now deal extra damage based on her physical power, as well as she's getting a mana reduction to both her ultimate and her persistent gust. Medusa's third ability Lacerate will no longer apply anti-heal, however it will be able to damage minions, and also they are moving the anti-heal from Lacerate to her Acid Spray, so now when you use your 2, Anything hit by the Acid Spray will have 50% anti-heal on it for 4 seconds. Now on to the skins for the main patch notes. Starting off, we have Hollow Halo Pele. Hunt begins for the unwelcome. Then we have Noxious Naga Medusa. Land or sea, our foes will drown before our might. 
and we have a Christmas Bastet skin named Little Helper Bastet. Bastet. We also have an Aphrodite skin named Burning Desire Aphrodite. They dare to threaten the Phoenix. I will defend her in this life and every other. We also got a skin with an awesome hat named the Magnificent Soul. Welcome to the show. Tonight, you are in for a showstopper. Next up, we have Infinite Oracle Morgan Le Fay. It is inevitable. Our world will collide and conflict will ensue. They could not help it, but it is their fate to be met with devastation. Here is Cyberblade Amaterasu. Target spotted and marked. This will be a walk in the park. Next, we have a kind of creepy but cool Shadow Hunter Hachiman. Maybe a good omen. And, and we even get another plushie skin with plushie Raijin. All the toys are so excited to finally play with others! Next up, there's a really cool set skin coming out called A Cursed Soul Set. Again, I must rise as this unholy beast to defend this decrepit battlefield. When will my torment end? Next is this Chunga skin named Curious Courier Chunga. Can't wait to harvest all my veggies this season. It's looking like a good year, right Blubber? And next up is a skin I am super excited about, which is Irobacchus. It works so well with his abilities and everything, but here it is, and I'll show it in-game in a little bit as well. You will find that if you look for the light, you can often find it. But if you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. And I'll let the Titan Forge team take over to show this really cool skin. Oh, he's got Sipping his... the tea! Literally right away. Oh, I absolutely love it. So he has so many different things. All of his animations oh, wow. have been worked on. So we're literally going to look at all of his different VXGs, like all of them, because they are all specific to Iroh. And you'll notice too, this is the dance. This is uh, actually like the, uh, the dragon dance. So it's, it's very true to the show. Yeah, I know everyone who worked on like the Avatar team, they're all huge fans. They go look for all those details. They want to make sure everything is as accurate as possible. Yeah, I, and I mean, you see it. Every skin so far, it's just, I mean, like you said, it's, it's meticulous. Everybody wants this to be as perfect as possible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I've loved everyone so far. So yeah, literally all of them. We, let, let, let's see, dance, furious, wave, clap, laugh, taunt, joke, all of them because there's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. There are animations specific to Iroh for all of them. The, the big smile. <laughs> oh, the full belly laugh. Yeah, that, that deep belly laugh. Yeah. Whatever you do to that spirit, I will unleash on you tenfold. Let it go oh. now. That's the, that's the quote from when they were at the, the, the North Pole and the, the hidden yeah. spring. Pride is not the opposite of shame, but it's source. You know how he catches the lightning and redirects it and mm -hmm. doesn't use it? Yeah. The classic the from the show. Is the source of energy in your body. It is called the Sea of Chi. Only in my case, it is more like a vast ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Even the direct quotes from the show. This skin is just so much beauty, so much effort went into this. And, uh. Oh. So cool. So I can think that's VXG? Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So let, let's let's get into the abilities though. Even the abilities have all been reworked to, to, to fit Iroh. You know, obviously Bacchus and Iroh have a lot of differences. So when he when he does his drink, it's tea. He's drinking his tea and getting energy from the tea. Nice. So you can see we even added the little teacup and everything. That's Boom. the leap. Yeah, that is so awesome. Incredible. It's like a, a, a firebending kick. Oh my god. Really showing off his mastery of firebending. That animation is so cool. Uh, like he said, like he said in the show, that's why they call him the Dragon of the West, because uh, he can breathe mad fire. They even replaced the auto attack to, uh, you know, to make up for not having that club. The range is made up by the fire bending moves. Yeah. Here I come. They 
life will not be oh, a pleasant fire experience. Fire lightning, lightning is sort of being like power dimmed. Yeah, oh, that's so good. So good. Fire Odin. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, it's Atlas time. So again, I'm just gonna let the the Titan Forge team take over because they explained the kit so well, and Pom Pom does a really good job of that, and everybody. So I'm just gonna shut up and let you guys enjoy the new gods kit. He's also very big. Yeah. Uh, he's <laughs> taller than most gods. He's not obviously the the like literally bigger than the map because that wouldn't work for gameplay reasons. Yeah, but that would be hard. He is very big, and he does actually have I think the tallest camera in the game, beating out Yorm. Oh uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's because wow. he, he needs to be able to see over that astral. Right. So, right. I guess so. So he does have the tallest camera, I believe, as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he looks like he is wielding that burden uh, as a mighty weapon. So yeah. that's horrifying and also really cool to look at. So. Uh, all right, we talked about how cool he is. I can't hold it any longer. Let's check him out in game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he oh, looks so cool. That's so awesome. All right, show him off. Show us everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's just run through every ability. Oh, that's so great. Nice. Oh, what happened to Odin? Feel the weight of the world. And there's the sky laser. Uh, so he did a lot of stuff there. Oh yeah, so many things to go <laughs> over. Uh, so let's just start off uh, with the let's start off with the basic attack. So uh, how's the basic attack work with Atlas? Mm -hmm. So Atlas's a standard basic attack is actually a just standard melee chain. You can see there he does an initial hit, another initial hit, and then a cleave. Um, these initial hits are actually slower. They're all 1.25, both swing time and damage. Got it. So he actually doesn't have a standard one attack ever at any point. <laughs> um, you can see also his passive activating there, where his passive, he can accumulate energy from damaging characters, and yeah. he gets an extra basic attack that when he has enough energy, it'll actually do that big slam down attack yeah. uh, that trembles enemy gods, so you can softly see built in there as well. Um, but once we get to the rest of the kit, we can talk about the other form that his basic attack can take. Ooh, will do. So let's, uh, how about his passive? His passive is called the Astrolabe, and uh, I mean, we can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, the Astrolabe. You can see that passive meter building up. Yeah. He now has the kind of floating orbs around it. The passive meter is kind of swirling around. That means his next basic attack by holding the Astrolabe is going to be that big slam down. This does bonus flat damage that scales off your level, <laughs> as well as trembles enemy gods who are in there. That is so cool. Uh, so, it'll stun minions as well, so you get some extra utility there. Yeah, all, all kinds of things you can bend that into. Uh, so his first ability, uh, Unburden, let's let's get into that. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the first ability, Unburden, he actually throws the Astrolabe, and this is a unique part of the character. Most of our weapons in Smite, when you throw them, they just kind of like disappear and reappear. They don't really have any permanence. This one actually does have that permanence. When you throw out the Astrolabe, you can see that he loses it. He's not holding it anymore. It yeah. is out, it is deployed. He has different animation sets for when he doesn't actually have this Astrolabe deployed. And his basic attacks also change, because now he doesn't have the weapon to swing. Yeah. His basic attacks turn into that pulse that happens at that area. You can use that to poke enemy gods. You can use that to, to help clear your minion wave. Um, it also scales, its damage scales off your level. So again, another thing that we did here was to make sure that he was a true support guardian. Um, he actually has a few level scalings in his kit yeah. to make sure that his kind of damage is more uniform and controlled over the course of the game. So uh, his second ability is called Gravity Pull. So uh, what, what's Gravity got to say? Yeah, so I mean, this is a huge uh, mass. It's a uh, basically the entire cosmos condensed down to his astrolabe. <laughs> uh, he can just control <laughs> the gravity all? of it because that, that is how uh, astronomy works. Yeah. So the first version of it, when he's holding the astrolabe, is actually going to be that cone that you see that's divided into two parts. If enemies are in the far part of it, they'll just get pulled towards Atlas. But if they're in that close critical range, they actually will get pulled into the astrolabe itself, and Atlas is able to freely aim and throw them. So he's able great. to move during that, he's able to like control what direction they're going to go, and that gives him essentially access to this kind of grab and toss that's on a non-ultimate ability. Definitely something that's really, really potent for yeah. a support guardian. Um, this does change, however, if he has his astrolabe deployed. So if he throws the astrolabe and then uses it, it'll follow the same rules. It has that outer area and inner area. Um, outer area, they get pulled towards the astrolabe. But if they're in the inner area, they get pulled to the center and then thrown towards wherever Atlas is at that moment. Oh, so, so, much, so much potential. Yep, two ways to control. One more direct up front, one more thrown range. You can get more people with it generally. Um, so it's some extra utility there. If you're up in the front line, you need to go peel for your back line, you can toss it back there and use the pull to try and get people off. Yeah. A lot of different options here with how you want to use the Astrolabe. And that's some primary goal of this kit is to, that mastery of knowing when to use it, when to pull it back, when to recall it, um, is something that I think uh, is going to separate good Atlas players from great Atlas players. And 
I just I can't imagine the just the roam game on this. You know, when you separate off from your lane and go to start do, handling, uh, you know, checking on other lanes and trying to get those ganks off. There's just going to be so much that you can get done with that. I'm mm -hmm. super excited to see that in game. As much as I am horrified to be uh, be the victim of it. Get tossed into towers and get a little bit too close. <laughs> exactly. Got to be I, careful. I go to dive and he's like, I'm just going to carry you. That's fine. Uh, so next up, we have his third ability, Kinetic Charge. Mm -hmm. Yep, so Kinetic Charge, uh, if you use it just normally, it's a pretty standard charge. You run into targets, you do an AoE on when you land, yeah. does some damage. And you can see that it actually doesn't do any other form of CC or anything if that's how you use it. But it does interact with your allies. So if you were to set if that circle around you, if you have allies get passed through there when you're charging, you actually take burdens from them. You'll cleanse them of any movement speed slows they have at that moment and give them a movement speed burst. And you'll take those burdens with you. And then if you run into a god at that point, you'll actually dump the burdens onto them. So this can st scale up to a 75% slow if you <laughs> cleanse three or more allies. Uh, very potent, uh, really great initiate, especially to get your team to follow you into a fight. Yeah. But you can also use it defensively to make sure that if someone's slowed, you can kind of cleanse that sloth and then help them get away. Yeah, another good peel thing. You know, you, they slow your uh, your hunter. You just run past, take that slow away, drop it on their hunter, then turn it down. And this is one, another thing that we're talking about with making him that kind of true support guardian. Yeah. If you use this maybe like a soul lane or a jungle where it's just coming out from the jungle, if you actually don't have access to that slow, you need an ally nearby you to gain access to that form of CC. Yeah, I, I'm just imagining like you said like team fights about to start you're standing third in line you barrel past everybody get all of that uh all, all of those stacks hit the first person and it slows the battle has to go. Mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful now finally and, and i mean we got to see it once but i feel like there's so much to talk about with the ultimate gamma ray burst Yep, so he, uh, he kind of controls the skies and, and, and the cosmos is kind of his domain. He's learned to control it over the last time. He can call down a gamma ray burst from the sky. You can see there that when he first casts it down, you have that kind of like more translucent beam yeah. uh, coming from that sky at origin point. Um, this beam itself is more of a radiating beam. Yeah. Uh, it actually doesn't do that much damage, but it does provide a huge protection shred and a power yeah. debuff. So you don't want to really be standing in this. If he, if he jumps it on you in the middle of a fight, you're going to be taking a lot more damage from his carries and a lot more damage from like the uh, jungler, the mage that might want to try and jump on you, um, as well as you're going to be doing less damage yourself. Yeah. Um, but then at any point during it or after five seconds, you can fire it. And at that point, the gamma ray burst focuses and travels across the map. Not fully global, it's about, uh, I want to say it's like 800 or 900 units. You can definitely go from mid lane to dual lane, mid lane to solo lane, but going from like dual lane to solo lane is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Um, but definitely a really long range. Um, but at, at that moment of focus, it does some more damage and immediately applies three stacks worth of that protection shred and power debuff. Wow. So if you want to just quick fire it to get some immediate protection shred, you can. If you want to try and get as many stacks as you can and then send it uh, chasing someone down, you can. But you can see there it actually leaves like the burn marks on the ground and pit yeah. and and it's just a terrifying thing when you hear it coming towards you in the jungle. Um, it's just one of those things that lets him have an extra bit of a, it's kind of like global threat yeah. utility that he can provide. And I mean, I can't imagine, like, you know, so much uh, zone control and objective control because, you know, teams grouped up on uh, know, the fire giant, you go throw that down, and all of a sudden fire giant's hitting a lot harder mm -hmm. and taking a lot less damage. So there's yep. a lot of great potential for. Uh, for just team play and you know objective control, and he has some good soft, uh, uh, kind of uh, soft synergies there as well. Um, his passive stacks with every individual hit, so dropping this on a team quickly builds up your passive. Yeah. You can use your two, either the the deployed version or the held version of the AO2. Uh, you can use that to keep people inside of it. You can chuck people into the path of the beam. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of interesting things that you can do. A lot of different ways to kind of combine these skills for maximum effect. Choose what you want to try and prioritize in the fight. If you want to be an aggressive duel laner, you can kind of charge forward and try and control the enemy team. If you want to play more defensive, you can keep your abilities kind of close to your chest and use them when you need to peel for someone. A lot of different flexible options here, but we did really try and uh, give him the tools that he needs to be a successful, true support guardian. And that pretty much wraps up the patch notes. Let me know if you guys want me to do this more often in the future. It does take time to edit this down into a small video, uh, you know, in one day, but my thoughts on Atlas are he's awesome, man. His lore is really cool. They fit it really well into his kit. And I'm looking forward to playing him in duel, especially auto attack duel. But with that, I'm pretty much going to leave you guys off. And uh, I hope you all have an amazing day. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.